Uh, welcome back to PartyPoker.com Snooker Premier League. Confirmation about first match tonight. Remember, we have three for you. We've had the first one, as I've just mentioned. It featured world number one, Mark Selby, against Stuart Bingham. And uh, no, do not adjust your TV. There's nothing wrong with that. It finished 6-0 to Bingham to put in top of Group A. He has just one game left to play, but things looking good for him to make the last four. On to our next game, and it's obviously into Group B, and it features two of the most exciting players in the game. The UK champion, Judd Trump, against four times champion of the world, John Higgins. Right, let's meet the boys. Introduced, as always, by our MC. Mr. John McDonald, and first up, it is John Higgins. Thank you, welcome back to the Spectrum Centre here in Guildford. Maxim Sport proudly present the PartyPoker.com Premier League Snooker. Coming to you live here on Sky Sports HD. Six frames, a 25 second shot clock. Referee in charge of the action is Brendan Moore. And now it's time to meet the players. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the four time champion of the world, John Higgins! John Higgins, I've said it before, I'll say it again, one of my favourite players in the game. Big night of snooker for many reasons, and a big game as well for both of you. Whoever wins will go top of the group. Yeah, it's, it's a big game, uh, although we would still have a match uh, left at the end of the tonight, but I think whoever wins this match is probably guaranteed to be in the semi-final. Because of the, the shot clock and the nature of the event, a lot of people fancy Judd to go on and win it this year. Um, from your point of view, is there, a, is there a point to prove? Do you want to you know, make people think that it's not just a one-man show? No, I mean, it, over the years, you know, people are thinking it, it played into Ronnie's hands. The only way it done that is because he's an unbelievable player. It's the same with Judd. Now, although the shot clock maybe doesn't help, maybe some of the, the, the other players in the match, now, whoever wins it, they're all great players, so now Judd's another great player, it doesn't matter if he's playing 20 seconds, 30 seconds, any, anything, he's a great player. And when you talk about great players, there's a list of yourself, Ronnie, Davis, Jimmy, um, do you put, Hendry, of course, do you put um, Judd in that list yet? What's he got to do to make people um, th regard him as one of the game's greatest ever players? Just keep on doing what he's doing. I'm sure he's going to get there. He's, he's a great player, as I've said in the past, and uh, he's going to be a top player for years to come. So just do what he's doing. Just do what he's doing. Lovely to see you again. John Higgins, everyone. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot Stephen Hendry's name. Right, John's opponent is the wonderful Judd Trump. Judd, no secret that you two met in Shanghai and produced one of the game's greatest ever finals. Uh, you were seven to up and John went on to win it, made a maximum as well. And there, when you two meet after an event like that, is the thought of payback in your mind? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, um, it was a great final. And um, to be honest, I didn't do a lot wrong. It's probably um, the best I played in the final, I'd say. And I, and I still lost, so just got to give credit to John, really. You're obviously loving this format in the Premier League. You've so far made three tons. Um, what is it about this that you think suits your game? Is it just the shot clock? Um, not really. I just um, like getting on with the game, really. So um, I think I play a little bit worse in ranking tournaments when I've got to think about stuff. So here I just get on with it and um, 
pot balls. I don't know if you heard that John said for you, just keep doing what you're doing to be regarded as one of the game's greatest ever players. You are playing someone that's been there, done it and seen it four times. You've played all the top players. How good is he? The best. The best? In my opinion, yeah. Well, that's great to hear. Good luck tonight. Should be a great game. Judge Trump, everyone. There you go. The best, in his opinion. Let's hand Thank over to our best. Uh, Mike Hallett John Higgins now joins Clive Everton in the commentary box. Standard bearers for rival snooker generations in opposition. John Higgins, indisputably an all-time great. Judd Trump, indisputably, has the capacity to achieve that status. John Higgins has won four world titles, 25 world ranking titles in all. Only Steve Davis with 28 and Stephen Hendry with 36 has won more than that. Judd Trump's defence of the UK title is approaching in the first week of December. about with that one. Nice cannon to stay on the black as well. This is not uh, guaranteed. Mm, too thin. Well, at least I think he's blocked the, uh, the path of the pocket. It was never going to be easy from there. Great red though. Pity he just left that cue ball near the side cushion. I think John's taken this to the corner. To the middle. My apologies. Ooh. At least he's played it with safety. turn has missed uh, a difficult pot to middle. Good shot from John, that leaving the white tie to the cushion, just the, the red down the table. Obviously you can't just glance off one of these. And not easy to get the white back to this top cushion. Just checking the, uh, the shot clock. Needs to hurry. I think it might be a time extension. Yes, however quick you naturally are, there are some shots which do require quite a bit of thought. No ranking points at stake tonight, of course, because this is an invitation tournament, albeit a very high-class one. But just for the record, Trump is second in the latest world rankings. Higgins third. Oh, that's a great shot. Well worth another look. Expect a great match from these two. And as you said at the top of the show, either play wins Eight. here. 
they will go to the top of their group, Group B. Nine. Great chance here for Judd to put something together after that terrific red to the middle. Fourteen. Just going back to that Shanghai Masters final as well, Clive. Fifteen. Judd was quite right actually watching that unfold, the second session. He hardly did anything wrong, it's just that John was on a totally different level. Well, that was one of the best finals ever. Eighteen for standard and for drama. Nine. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. They just might need to nudge one or two here. They seem to be covering each other up to both corner pockets. Well, that's a great shot. He's got one to the middle. He's trying to get on the one to this corner pocket, but he's still got the alternative red. Thirty-one. We've been talking about uh, the great final they played in the Shanghai Masters. Well, of course, the 2011 World Championship final was right up in that category, with Higgins winning 18-15. 36. Yeah, Judd won't be best pleased with that one. You're right as well, Clyde, in as much that. I think a couple of shots in one of the afternoon, I think it was a third session, that final. If Judd had just selected, shall we say, other things, Good he job. might have been world Thanks. champion that year. Yeah, things they could have been. But uh, meanwhile, here, he's had to <coughs> shut up shop on 37. Good safety that from Trump forcing Higgins to use the cushions. Good shot as well. Applied a lot of side onto the cue ball and a, a fraction more, and he would have had John in some real trouble. Oh, I'm not sure if he's got a path back to the ball here. Fifty two reds are uh, together there time on the right hand side. He's taking a time extension. I think it's just slightly swerve around the green. He's looking at just coming off those. This is dangerous, especially now. 
Not as intended, obviously. One. Couldn't do much more with that, really, but it's turned out okay, actually. He's on the black, and he's taken a red down the table. Black. White ball. Well played. That was the split. Couldn't avoid uh, eight cannoning the red on the right hand side of the table, but uh, knocked in the straight middle distance black. Nine. Trump's a left hander but uses the rest right handed. Can you see enough of this red near the black? We're playing this one instead. Nice shot. Unfortunately, left himself the wrong side of the blue. It just depends if this uh, black goes past the red. Didn't want to cannon the brown. 18. Would have been better on the outside red, but for that. Great recovery pot. And I think he's on this paint, but he's. Uh, He's definitely on the black to the middle. Trump really steadied himself for that because he knew that it was a chance to secure the frame if he knocked it in. But he was also well aware that if he didn't, he was going to leave Higgins in for possibly a winning counter-attack. 26. Yeah, that was frame ball as well. An excellent red. 27. And Trump has played this opening frame just about perfectly. He's potted uh, everything 33. he's gone for. He's played uh, 34. a couple of excellent safeties. Shot selection has been sound. It all adds up to 1-0. 41. Forty-two took the opportunity to cannon the last red into a better position, but uh, the white has gone out of position, or, or ideal position anyway. Forty-two in the frame. Not that it made uh, any material difference at that stage. Judd Trump leads John Higgins by a frame to nil.
Earlier this evening, Stuart Bingham made two centuries and four half centuries in whitewashing Mark Selby 6 0. He plays Neil Robertson later this evening, and uh, Judd Trump has just uh, won the opening frame against John Higgins in the middle match. Thank you, the second frame. Judd Trump to break. Good break off shot as well. There's a couple of things here on the left hand side, but someone's only got really a choice of a safety. As he flew, what? He needs a good cannon. What? Well, he could take the brown on, but it's tough from there, in behind the green, I think. John Higgins, one. Always difficult those shots, just to run in, right in behind the colour with these fast cloths. But he should have made a better job of it than that. <laughs> we had a quick look at the red on the left hand side, he's thinking about taking it on. Easy safety back to bulk. Well, he's choosing to attack. Great shot. Screw back further than intended. John Higgins four. Left himself a potable red to middle, but I felt sure he was screwing back to leave a red to right corner. blue here. The black only goes to one corner pocket. Oh dear. Control. Four. Well, even the best players miss easy balls at times, and that was an easy ball for a player of Trump standard. He's got the pink to the right centre. Well, he's held the white too much. He's got it to stick on that red. And I don't think he's on the intended red. He might just be with a pink going behind the pack. Still be on this red to the right corner. Set. Well, it seems you can see it. There's plenty of room as well. Well done. Eight. Well, there's a couple of loose reds he could play on here. But option to go into them but he wants to try and clear the, the path of the black if he can. Perfect angle to split them. Four. 
as he's played on the one left of the black, which is the one he wants to try and get a, out of the way, but he's just got a trace of sight on the key ball there. I think he's okay. Oh, that's perfect. Have to play the cannon now. Forty. He's played it well. Well, nothing after this one, so you'll need to leave a good angle on the black to get into the bunch. Twenty-two. Perfect cue action and stance by Wesley. Textbook stuff. That's why he's been such a great player. Yes, it's the foundation of it all. Fifth. Higgins has taken to using a slightly heavier cue this season. Which maybe does assist him with that pack op those pack openers. The cue in effect does the, does the work, or some of it anyway. Thirty-seven. Forty-four. Just saw there on our quick shot that uh, that the pause, the slight pause before the player delivers the cue, and all the great players have that. Time extension. Again, uh, calls uh, for a time extension. He would be playing a red to right corner, but for awkward bridging over this one. Forty-five. No more time extensions for Higgins in this frame then. Fifty two. Fifty-three. Plus the pink to go sixty in front with only fifty-nine on the table. Fifty-nine. Didn't have much chance in the opener, but John's responding well here. It's good to see him back in form. Last season, 66. He didn't reach a single semi final in ranking events. 67. And only two quarters. He's going to hit that one slightly, though. Got to be careful here that he doesn't push something safe 74. because obviously he's looking for the sentry. 75. Well done. 75. Oh, he's got the slight angle on the pink to come around the back of the final red. 
Looks like it goes to the corner past the blue. 81. Well played. Thank you, still on. This match between these two is warming up nicely. Higgins starts the evening on 506 centuries. 87. Only Ronnie O'Sullivan and Stephen Hendry have made more in professional competition. 89. Ninety-two. Ninety-six. Well, this has been superb. Just what he needed. A beautifully controlled century. A break of 114 brings John Higgins level at one all. Stuart Bingham had two centuries in drubbing Mark Selby 6-0. John Higgins has just made one in equalising at one all against Judd Trump. Thank you, third frame. John Higgins to break. No, he wasn't tempted with the red on the left hand side there and that's a great safety shot no so he could return that a possible pot onto the left corner but he's got to avoid other reds with the cue ball
Well, didn't mean to cannon the second red. Just got to uh, negotiate the cue ball here, though. There's plenty of reds you could hit. Nice bit of check side. Also, a bit of a big bounce there off the top Whoa. position. Still on the green, though, I think. Green ball. Ten. He's going to have to concentrate Eleven. on the blue here for the time being, unless he can possibly get the pink on to the black spot. I think its own spot is covered. That would help. Bit of work to do here, though, to put anything together. Sixteen. Seventeen. But like we keep saying though, Clive, these, these great players are so good at making half chances into full ones. You know, two, two or three shots, everything opens up. Well, they're sure aware of the... Twenty-two. ...importance of shot selection. This red, for instance, releases two other reds to the opposite corner. 23. I think he got a heavy contact there. He's just finished the wrong side of the blue. Might have to play the yellow to get close to these reds. Going around the houses, I think. Well, that's a great shot to miss the brown and the green. Just depends where he lands. 28 shot. Now, does he have the angle here just to drop in behind the black? This red's fairly straight. It's perfect. Oh, it is perfect. Again, he feels he's got a little bit of a bad contact. He's dropped short on this black. Yes, if he'd left himself a three-quarter ball pot on the black along the rail, it would have been pretty simple for a player of his calibre, but a cut along the rail. Time extension. It's a different matter. Trump takes a time extension. Oh, this is tricky. No, he's missed it, I think. Judge Trump, 29. And that was all because of the bad contact on the red. He didn't quite get behind it on that black and much tougher. Well, that was never in. So Judd there, they've done most of the hard work One. to get the reds open, and he might have just handed them to John. All reds on. <coughs> Eight. Nine. It's a nice little cannon to open up the pink. Well, they're all at his mercy here. Okay, he's pushed one to the side cushion, but if he clears the rest, I think Chud will be needing sneakers by then. Fifteen. Sixteen. 
24 Into the lead with that black 31 But even blacks with the four open reds 32 would leave him only 34 in front with 35 on. Yeah, glad your mass is better than mine, Clive. I thought he might uh, not need that, but obviously he does now. But you know, if you can just get in behind it, he only needs to drop it in. 38. Would be frame ball if he takes pinks and blacks with these other three reds. Not ideal on the black to get on one of the open reds. Yeah, I wonder if you might go around the angles here or just drop him behind this uh, tougher red. Well, he's having a look at the pink, but uh, he might go around the houses with a cue ball in and out of ball. Time extension. Well, this needs uh, to be a good shot to get anywhere near these reds. Oh, what a shot that is. Well, I mean, it was out of the end of the angle there, but he created one and to power that and to power that in and get there on the red. That was superb. 45. Forty-six. Well he's making hard work of these. The black is too thin a potting angle to hold for the red to the right of it. Wow, well, look at that one. Brilliant. Let's just have a quick look to see if the black passes this red. I'm not sure. If he comes back for the pink. He's going to have to play this with a little bit of pace, and this can be missed. Oh, well, there you go. It was a tougher shot to get back for the pink. John Higgins, 52. Had he been able to roll it, would probably have got that. Just, uh, just going back to the for the pink, increase the difficulty. Well there you go, I'll say as soon as you start playing those with pace when they're tight to the cushion, they can be missed. This needs a good shot though. And it looks pretty good. Well, what about that one? That's a great shot. As long as he's got some angle on this right? Get out for the black. I think he's got some angle. They enjoyed that one. That was a great shot. And for the fact that John Higgins was making hard work Five. at the break when he's at the table, this frame really should have been his. But now, Judd has a trump. Uh, Judd has a trump. Judd has a chance to uh, to pinch it. Well, he's playing. He's probably playing his trump card here, Clive. Twelve. Well, it could have been worse. 14. Not where he wanted to be for the green, and in any case, brown for blue would not be the easiest. Well, this will be some shot to get back for the brown here. I think he's playing this with check side topspin. Oh, 
to Trump. Fortunately, it was just down to position, really. <coughs> John needs green, brown, and blue here. Three. <laughs> Great shot. This is Ryan Ball. And towards the end of this frame, it could have gone either way. I expect. Uh, John to knock this one in though. So that leaves Trump needing two snookers. Higgins not bothering to play position for pink. He knew that the blue was all in pink. So Trump had a chance to win that frame but lost position. And it's Higgins who leads by two frames to one. Trump had a chance to win the last frame, but he had to play that green with uh, left of centre striking. And uh, that made the pot itself more difficult. So it's John Higgins who leads by two frames to one after Stuart Bingham's sweeping 6-0 win over Mark Selby earlier this evening. Thank you, frame four. Just Trump to break. Well, he's left Judd a little tempter here to the green pocket. He could hold for the pink, but he knows that if he misses, he'll leave John things on here. He might take it on.
it was a big shot. He was bound to leave John one on. Yes, but uh, he didn't play it impulsively. He weighed it up. He thought he was going to pop that. One. Yeah, just got to be careful here because you know, not say forced errors or we say unforced errors, but if he takes too much on, then John will just pick him off. Six. Seven. own admission though Clive it wasn't a great season for him last year the year before of course it was phenomenal really but um, it, it's nice to see well, him back playing well and the John Higgins at the table at the Green Bay's playing well is a delight to watch 30 well nobody older than 36 has won the world title since Ray Reardon in 1978 Higgins is 37 and uh, maybe at his best, 18. He could upset uh, that statistic. Nineteen. Well, he's got a perfect angle on Run. the brown here to go into the pack. That's unlucky. Twenty-three. Foul. Well, well, very careless indeed from John there. Just caught the red too thick. He hasn't really done any damage though. Oh, that was considerably too thick. There we go. Trump was all set to play a safety, but um, he thought that if he played the red two away from the black, he might leave a chance for Higgins to pot it from distance to the right corner. So he exercised his option to put Higgins in again, even though Higgins could put the cue ball anywhere he liked in the D. Well, he nearly got good in a lot of trouble there. Touch of an inch and a roll. He would have been snookered. He can hit reds, but of course he's also got to avoid these two that's on the left uh, cushion. Well, the red was close, but it's a pretty good cue ball. He's managed to cover the one on the left-hand side, so just another safety coming up then. And they're open, if a player gets in. Chance here. Well played. <laughs> Needs to hit something here. That's unlucky. One. A foolish contact on the brown is on yellow or green. Good red though. Knew that he was uh, cannoning other balls. To Trump one. But figured that uh, he was sure to be on a colour of some sort. He wasn't. But uh, he leaves Higgins snookered with a red hanging over a pocket. Well, he nearly went around it, but he still left good this red down the cushion and one to the middle, but very dangerous if he misses. Well, there you go. 
He's taking it on. Big shot. Well, fair enough to take it on, but I didn't expect him to hit it that hard because it, he was leaving this red, whatever speed he played it at. Well, a couple of nice nudges there, especially with that red down the, uh, the table that's available. Six. Seven. Twelve. Done that with Fish. straight, uh, being straight really, but he's played a good shot there, pink to the middle. Higgins has potted 96% of the balls that he's uh, attempted. Solid stuff. 19. Wait. Trump down on 82. Just thinking about that final in Belgium last weekend, Clive. Mark Allen was up to 97%. Three centuries on the bounce he started with. 26. To beat Mark Selby 4 1 in that final. Played terrific stuff there. 27. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Well, he's over hit that slightly. To be straight on this pink because he's now going away from these reds, and even if he pops this pink, he still needs one more red. Well, 58 the lead with 59 on, so expect him to get this red though. 40. Only needs this. 40. Well played. And John Higgins just beginning to find his feet here. Try to disturb the two reds on the side cushion, but 43. the frame is surely already won. 61 in front, only 51 on. Johnny against 43. Trump's going to give it a go, though, and may have been influenced in that decision by the fact that uh, there is a red. One. Up against the black, which is offering an ideal opportunity for a snooker. Yeah, that's why I was very surprised by the way John played that last shot. Seven. Eight. Not the perfect angle on this pink. He wanted to be top side, or well, towards the top cushion behind the red, but I don't think he can get there now. 
Unless he plays this with a lot of check side. He's going to probably just try and stick the white 40. on the black here, put the red down the table. Well, he's playing it a different way because it's top spin. Well, he's got to cover this. Trump. I don't think he has done. I think John can see this red through the gap. Higgins had potted that red, it would have removed any vestige of doubt about the outcome of this frame. Might play the cross double. It's all over if it goes in. Well, he's prepared to wait, but hang on. You shouldn't be throwing the wise around the table like that. Very surprised. I suppose you can afford one if there's only three, well, especially when there's three snookers required. Another chance for John here to kill off this brain then. Uh, this is a better shot. Nicely played. He's got the snooker. And I think John might be able to just swerve around this black, actually. He could play off two cushions, which he is doing. Too narrow. Mm, now then. Five. That's interesting. To Trump, five. Well, it's certainly more interesting, but still a difference of 42, with only 35 on. Yes, imagine if he, uh, oh, <laughs> I was about to say, imagine if he gets a free ball. that one. This is world number two Trump versus world number three Higgins. World number one Selby had uh, one of the most disappointing evenings of his professional career. Thumped 6 0 by Stuart Bingham. Yeah, Stuart played quite well in that actually, and uh, he had back to back centuries as well. And of course, he's up a little bit later against New Robertson. Well, John's still yet to kill off this frame. Well, 
Well, John was trying to just push that green tight to the back cushion. Too hard. But I give Trump credit for battling on. At top level of the game, you've got to win all sorts of frames. It's okay to win one with a century break. But uh, there have been cases when it's been vital to win one from two or three snookers needed. Yeah, unfortunately, Judd now found himself snookered, and this is not easy to hit. It's bounced off the cushion. He might concede here. Well, has he had Five. enough? John Higgins, four. Well, he'll let John pop the red just to make sure. But he's back to three snookers needed. It could be argued that uh, this passage of play is disturbing John Higgins's rhythm, but I've seen this kind of thing happen before. Come the next frame, and uh, Higgins or somebody like him plays just as well as he was playing. He's missed that by a mile. <laughs> Got to keep the red on the table in the hope of manufacturing an extra red by means of a free ball. into the green here, send the red down the table. Well, went for the cut, so it's all over now. Yeah, he's obviously a little bit further off that cushion than I thought, but... Uh, well, in the end, John made a little bit of hard work of this uh, glimpse in the straight. But it's going to be 3-1 to him. It is, and um, let's see Eight. whether this passage of play when he's been uh, unable to pot a ball while Trump's been trying to lay a snooker. Let's see if that makes uh, Ten. any difference to how he plays in the fourth frame. Ten. 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 John Higgins is sure of at least one point because he leads Judd Trump by three frames to one.
Earlier this evening, Stuart Bingham made two centuries and four half centuries in trouncing Mark Selby 6-0. John Higgins has built up a 3-1 lead over Judd Trump, so he's going to get a draw at least. And uh, in the remaining match of the evening, Stuart Bingham will be returning to play Neil Robertson. Well, just to await Judd Trump, uh, Clive. Well, John's, uh, Judd's on his way back, actually. But in a way, Judd started. I thought, well, aye, aye, here we go. But uh, I think Judd's just lost the plot a little bit here. Allow John to find some rhythm. John, John. Okay. Thank you, frame five. John Higgins to break. So John gets us in the way then in frame five. So Judd has a little bit to do here to try and get a point out of this match. Good pace. It might not be good enough if he knocks this in. Very difficult from tight on the rail at that distance. Made sure he got the cue ball back into Bork. Better to miss those on the thin side than the thick side. Exactly. But it seems that John's tempted with this one. On the left hand side, this needs to go queuing. Well, but he's taken the white back into the bulk area. It seems okay. Well, he might be going for this. Well, he had the gap actually for the white, so I thought he might be colliding into another red, but he's left that same red on. Great shot, and we've got the cannon to stay on the black. Not an unmissable black, though. He's caught the wrong side of the red there that he can it into. He, uh, he can still pot this red, and I think he can still hold for the black. Well, there's the extended rest now, the half butt. That's the extend on John's cue, but the half butt and the full butt are now Time. pretty much obsolete. All this new equipment came in a few years back and uh, it's obviously helped the players because they can still play with the same tip of the queue. Seventeen. Probably play to bring the white roughly where it is now for the red to the left middle. Didn't have to go into the pack at this shot. Oh, John. John Higgins, well, seventeen. He just seemed to put a quick sort of a quick delivery of the cue there. Oh, but Trump misses his chance, and it wasn't a difficult one. Trump
Trump's under pressure even to get a point out of this match. And if he doesn't, then uh, it will be uphill to qualify for the semi-finals. Attempted the plant there, but uh, knowing that he was covering everything with the pack. Played a very uh, conservative safety there, mindful that there was a red hanging over the left corner. Too close to take that one on. Well, there's been a bit of uh, tip tap in here. We could finish up with a re rack. There's only 17 points in it. Uh, this is touching ball. Touching ball. It is touching ball. <laughs> well, I, I didn't I couldn't see anything from where I was thinking like it was from there. I'm not quite sure what happened there. I think Judge was saying that he caught the white, but uh, he didn't catch the red. He's gone to a time foul anyway. I referee Brendan Moore didn't see it actually. I think Judge was. I think Judge actually fouled himself. So that should be a five-point penalty. Yes. Because it was touching ball as well. So I think. Um, foul. With it, Oh, hello. John's done it now. <laughs> but apart from anything else, they don't want to be playing a push shot. Well, I think a couple of shots each here, and I think our referee Brandon Moore would be just asking the boys and say, come on, lads, re rack. Back off the cushion then. Depends how hard he hits this, he could open a red up. <laughs> well, this isn't going anywhere. Well, I think Brendan Moore could say, right out chaps, six shots each or something like that. If any of you are wondering where Paul Collier, the usual Premier League referee is, he's in China where the uh, China International Championship starts on Sunday. There's a possible cross double on here for John, but of course so risky with that right over the corner pocket. I think uh, Brendan will just well, he's nice just to play a couple of more shots and then let's see where we're going. Time extension. <laughs> so Higgins has got no more time extensions left. Chose to go for the double. Oh. 
So the stalemate is resolved. I think Higgins thought that uh, if the double didn't go in, he would be covering this red by means of the bunch, but he's nowhere near to doing that. I just wonder whether it's just gone far enough for the black here. I might just be able to just get the edge. Seems you can say, yes, there is plenty of room. It's got the red down the table as well. Well, Judd won the uh, the patience game there. Eight. Nine. Playing on the red, just uh, behind the pink spot, looks pretty good. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Well, he hasn't played that very well. Caught the uh, the red two full. Thirty-five. I just wonder whether this one goes to the yellow pocket. He's had a quick look at the one to the left middle. Time extension. Well, Judd's taken a time extension. It's just as well it didn't knuckle 35 and stay at the end of the table. Well, this frame is a mixture. It appears the time file that we were talking about was not awarded. It wasn't clear at the time, I have to say. Yeah, I think it all got a little bit mixed up in the, in the moment, Clyde, didn't it? But, uh, well, cracking red here by John to get in. Good chance to pinch this uh, fifth frame. Got two points on the board. Seven. Eight. Pink and black both available. Reds in inviting positions. Good chance this for Higgins to 50. secure the frame and with it two points for a win. 16. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. 
the lengthy interlude of tip tapping 31 is receding fast into the past Thirty-two. Higgins closing in on a 4-1 lead, which would be a winning lead. Thirty-nine. It's a great shot. Forty. Well, he should win the frame from here now. Just the black and the red required. Forty-seven. Fifty-four. Fifty-six. Well, John's played pretty solid actually in the last few frames. Could say helped along a little bit, a little bit by Judd. He hasn't uh, 59. played as well as he did in the opening frame. But it's he who's going to secure the two points here this evening. Put himself top of Group 63. B. For the evening, he leads Judge Trump by four frames to one. John Higgins leads uh, Judd Trump 4-1 earlier this evening. Stuart Bingham trounced Mark Selby 6-0, making two centuries and four half centuries. Thank you. The final frame. Judd Trump to break. Judd Trump, having uh, lost this match, is going to need to beat Mark Allen at Doncaster the week after next. In order to get into the four man playoffs.
Well, foul. that probably just about sums up his evening. Full. It never rains, but it pours. Started so well, and the end, uh, it's just gone away from him from there. on this pink, he's got the blue, I think he's nicely on the pink actually. And John, I want to nail this one as well, obviously frame advantage in the group will help. You'll have one more match actually, John Higgins to play, he plays Peter Ebden in, uh, in Durham, which is the last qualifying day before we go to the semi-finals and finals weekend at the end of November. Seven. Eight. Well, he's finished on one, but he expected more reds to scatter there. 13. And, uh, hopefully something might have opened up the black, but you'll have to stay on the blue. 14. John Higgins is such a consummate technician. 19. Great tactical game as well. 20. His shot selection is invariably shrewd when there's a doubt as to what he should play. Didn't open the bunch though. <laughs> Again, you know, not the right contact. 23. Just a safety. 23. John Higgins, 23. Well, this guy's used the black into the open. as good a safety as the one that Higgins played. More comfortable queuing. Chose a safety of course which was not opening the bunch.
time extension. Quite sure what he could land on, really. Certainly a tricky positional shot. Yellow. Yeah. 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 Trump one. Good shot that. He was in a little bit of trouble but find a managed to find a path for the cue ball. This safety exchange has um, brought all reds into possible positions. Good cue ball though. Unlucky with the pot. easily have gone in off there but didn't the wrong red. Well, I'll tell you what, you'd have been proud of that one, Clive. <laughs> well, I don't think any billiards player would even have attempted it. <laughs> one. You'll have to play the yellow here. Yellow. Six.
40. Fifteen. Twenty two. Twenty-three. Try to just tickle the two reds in such a way as to make them possible, or at least one of them. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Chance and there's them open again here though. Well played. Mm, a good chance to win the frame now. Thirty-seven. Well, you never know. This last frame could be very important. Yes. Thirty-eight. He's got an informed Mark Allen to play in a few days time but if he gets a victory there he could still sneak in to the last four who knows frames count back could come into it 44 45 Just the black and the red needed. Fifty-two. Frame ball then. Look, overall though, fly. You've got to say the victory for John Higgins is now four-two. The score line reflects the play. He has played better out of the two. I'm sure that Judd would be disappointed, especially the way the way he started. 58. Yes, he ran away with the first frame. Higgins didn't pot a ball, but six. Higgins quickly equalised the break of 114. He added three more frames to lead 4-1. 63. But uh, with this effort, Judd Trump has uh, reduced the 67. final margin to 4-2. Seventy two. Seventy eight. Some takes the last frame with a very nice break of seventy eight. But it's Higgins who wins by four frames to two. Play two, one two for him.
Now, welcome back to thepartypoker.com Snooker Premier League. This is the state of play in Group A. Remember, three matches tonight as opposed to the normal two. We started off with Stuart Bingham taking on the world number one, Mark Selby. And he beat him, and didn't he just, by six frames to nil, which has put Stuart back on top. And as you can see, Stuart will be back out soon to play the 2010 world champion, Neil Robertson. That's Group A. Group B looks like this, and a very happy John Higgins will be over the moon with that win because not only does he get maximum points, but he books his place in finals weekend. He tops the group and will definitely be in the top two. And he's with me now as well. Not only did he win, not only did he win a few pounds as well, but he also knocked in a 1-1-4. Um, and when you're playing like that, you know obviously things are going your way. Yeah, obviously Judd won the first frame and then it was important to get back into it because Judd, as we all know, is one of the best front runners we've got in the game. So it was good to make a hundred and then you felt as if you were back in the match then. There was a few frames that were a bit scrappy. I know there was one where Judd was looking for that snooker or a few snookers as well. From your point of view, does that put your rhythm off or are you happy to play those sort of frames? No, I wasn't happy because I think I missed about seven or eight long shots. It was really, really bad. But uh, no, just... Very happy, obviously. That was me. Come here tonight and, and win the match and try and qualify. And uh, done that, so yeah, happy. Yeah. And you have qualified as well. Uh, you're through to the last four. Uh, the Premier League's not really been that kind to you in, in past years. Um, could it have your name on the title this season, do you think? I hope so. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to play, and uh, I know that, but I'm just trying, I'm just trying to enjoy it. Now, so there's some years I've came here and I've got really uptight about the shot clock and, and been complaining about it to myself, but I've just came here just to, as I said at the start of the, the tournament, I've got a free run here because obviously Ronnie declined the invitation, so I was lucky enough to get the call, so you know, delighted to be in the semis. You look over the moon, John. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to see you as always. Congratulations, great win and well done getting to the finals weekend. John Higgins, everyone. Well done, John. Two down, one to go, and it features someone we've already seen tonight, and the 2010 world champion we'll see in a second.